members of the public here interested in testifying, so let's move um, <coughs> to our second item, which is to get to know a little bit more about John Yes. So welcome. Well, yeah, thank you. Good evening. Uh, Josh Gom is uh, coming in behind Paul Odenthal. And uh, right up front, I did not ask Aaron to put my picture on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> that was not coming from me in any way. They surprised me today with that, with that photo. So please don't think that <laughs> Josh wants to put it up there. Uh, but uh, uh, like Paul, I'm a, uh, uh, coming out of the Navy. Uh, 21 years in the Navy. The same community as Paul was involved with the uh, Civil Engineer Corps. Um, so I have done uh, various public works, uh, construction management positions um, throughout uh, throughout my career with, uh, with them. The last job I had with their uh, Naval Base San Diego was a public works officer there, overseeing the um, second largest Naval Base, um, a lot of tenants uh, supporting ships, and, um, dealing with aging facilities and a lot of budget. So I feel like my my time here to the school district. Uh, I have that, that experience. Uh, we're from uh, Washington State, from uh, Port Angeles. That's where I went to high school. And my wife is from there, born and raised in Washington. So two kids. Oldest will be going to uh, PCC Rock Creek Sophomore College, and the, uh, the youngest is 16. He'll be a uh, junior next year. So be at the school uh, but happy to be here. Um, the, the last three weeks have been fast and furious in terms of the job and getting up to speed and Aaron and, and uh, Nathan Potter and John have been uh, helping me get there so but I'm happy to be here. Look forward to getting to know you uh, a little bit more. And you have to also share where you're living. Yes, I knew that was coming up. So. <laughs> Let's just get it out there. Let's get it out there. A Westview Portable? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I had to That's a good option. <laughs> so it wasn't my uh, plan coming in here, but I bought Paul's house. <laughs> <laughs> so when I interviewed for the job in, in May, um, Paul had made the comment, you know, well, my house will be on the market. I said, well, wouldn't that be funny? We talked. Yeah. But you fast forward to July, we're house hunting, and it's like the fourth house that we're looking at and uh, going through. Um, his realtor, who I didn't know was his realtor, she said, this guy's a Navy guy, he's retired, <laughs> worked for the school district. I'm like, is it Paul Odenthal? Yep, it's Paul Odenthal. <laughs> uh, so I obviously we have the same same taste in, in, in house and where we live and all that. But uh, yes, I bought Paul's house. It was well maintained. Uh, you know, and I, I knew it was Paul, I'm like, okay, if anything's wrong with the house, <laughs> I know him, I know where he lives, but he will take care of it. <laughs> Uh, I, I love my cards. I think they're in there. Um, Eric, I don't think I have one for you, but I will give one to you. And uh, we we'll try to support. But uh, uh, yeah, no, it's great to be on board, and, and I look forward to getting to, to know you uh, know you more. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. We're glad you're here too. You've got a great staff. Good job working with them. Um, it'll be a good year ahead of you, and then we'll be. Working on the next bond. Next year, year. So, <laughs> get your, your sea links. So oh, yes. <laughs> as we wrap up this one. Thank you, Josh. Yep. Thank you. Let's take it away. Bond program status report. Okay. So, this was, um, I'm going to cover this. I'll hit the highlights here. Okay. Um, so, send this out an email, and I don't know if you had a chance to look through it, but I'm going to just hit the highlights. And if you have any specific questions, we can go through it. I plan to just focus on the, the executive summary page. And, and go go cover that. So, the highlights of the the, the report for this uh, for this month, you can see that the uh, program reserve has decreased by an amount there, 105,000, and then the, the reserve and the project contingency has decreased by 543. So, to hit the highlights of what caused those uh, decreases, Five Oaks Middle School, um, we had the decrease by 350,000. Those were due to AE fees. Um, we had a um, firewall that just had to work out the details and that attributed to that uh, getting the additional uh, time from the AE. We had some furniture and uh, equipment changes. And then we had an unforeseen um, sewer line replacement. Phase two bathrooms in that project, um, new finishes, new, um, uh, new bathrooms, but it tied to the existing sewer line and that, that line needs to be replaced. So there's costs associated with that in terms of uh, tying to that line. We have not done the replacement yet, but those are costs associated with investigation and getting into that. Um, the maintenance facility project right across this uh, next door here. Um, so we had the system development charge from the city um, for that water meter. Um, so that, that uh, 
decrease was by 144,000 that you see there. The, the last uh, item that I'll talk about was the, the transfer of 105,000. That's from the heightened flood. I'm not sure how much background you have on the heightened flood that happened back in May. Um, we had a water, uh, basically a water line that um, uh, we had a failure to a, to a water heater. Dumped about 150,000 gallons of water into the, uh, to the school. And so we had the initial 250,000 that we took out of general fund. And we had SERPRO in the initial response. And then we had the additional 105. That was to help with the build back <coughs> there and getting the school back up and ready to go. That uh, covers that. Under the schedule perspective, we have a report that Aaron has attached in here. We're going to cover that in more detail. The projects that, that have been ongoing over the summer, uh, there's a lot of work going on. We're going to hit the highlights for that for you. So some of the, some of the information there is already um, it's outdated. And so we're going to cover that here later when we cover the schedule of the project. So depending on your questions, that, those, are, those are the highlights of the executive summary. That's what I wanted to cover. Again, we'll get into more details of the schedule. We did make changes to the activity map, which is identified. Uh, from the last time you looked at the report, uh, Five Oaks Middle School is now on the watch list, um, and Highland Park is back on track. And so those are, those are the changes that we had from the previous report. Is that <coughs> We have a kid at Cedar Mill, so we saw the note about the yeah. water damage. Is we're that on track? We're, to, we're yeah. talking in detail about that. Yeah, so okay. that, that continues to evolve. Um, so on August 10th, we had that rain that was kind of sporadic throughout, throughout the area. Um, but we had a river project that was ongoing. Uh, bottom line's contractor didn't tighten up the, the building properly, and so that rain took into the facility. So we'll cover that. Yep. Talks about where we're at. So we got some changes to that one. So there was mold. <coughs> is uh, Heighton on, on track to open on time? Heighton is on track to open on time. There will be some impacts. We'll talk about Heighton as well okay. in terms of um, what, what the teacher can expect and some of the work that will happen up here. Okay. I did a walkthrough today, Tom, <clears throat> over at Heighton, and teachers are all in classrooms moving along. The materials that will cover the items that we need to take care of are easily done after hours. It does not impact. Okay. So uh, I think the, the work will happen after school starts will be some of the waste coding that has to be done in the hallways. So it's like finished work, came work, and have to, to get tight. Okay, just moving on. Well, if there's any questions from anybody? Actually, we're going to turn over to Maureen now for uh, communications. Update. Okay, this is the last page of your packet. And um, if we could get to the new website. Um, I think the last time we met, we were in the process of moving to a new website. Um, you'll recall that we have to comply with an ADA uh, complaint that our website wasn't accessible. So um, we've been working the past year with a team of IT and our department and, of course, all the departments and schools to that uh, redesign. So it impacted how we would present um, information, and it's really, really nice. Um, and I want to take us to the maybe the, the bond, the facility development, um, so we can show you how you can find the construction updates now. I'm not going to print them out for you because they don't really print, print out pretty like a, um, So you can click on the drop down <coughs> for community, and then there's school bond projects. Oh, good. It looks a lot better. Mm -hmm. It does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it had been at least five, six years since yeah. we'd done a refresh, so it was time anyway. But um, this is to make sure that we are in compliance with ADA accessibility. So you'll find all the projects. So if you scroll down, you have the basics of um, the bond measures, and then by school, the elementary projects, middle school projects, and high school projects major projects as well as um, the $98 million um, in projects. So we do have updates for young William Walker Elementary and Five Oaks Middle School. It's just really phenomenal to think about Five Oaks. You know, we had our meeting there. And you know that they've been 
they've been flying it as they've been building it. It's just incredible. And we've not had that in the, in the district. It's really quite a story to be able to share. I think this will be something that they'll want to reflect on afterwards is a how did they do that kind of story. Because um, how they've staged it, it's really remarkable. I was over there last week because we had some media interest in what are the, some of the new security projects and things that we've got going with, um, with the bond in our schools. We decided to leave William Walker alone because they'll get plenty of attention next week yeah. and decided to focus on Five Oaks. And it was really a good choice because, uh, for in particular, you know, Five Oaks, you had to usually walk through two and three classrooms to get to maybe your classroom of destination, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's all changed with the new classroom configurations, the pods that have been created. But it's in a step-by-step -step process, a three-year process. It's been just remarkable. But um, this is a picture of um, the media center, the library. And we'll have to have a meeting over there when it's all done, because it's just mm -hmm. really going to be beautiful. You see how light and bright that is with a huge skylight in the middle of it? And they were working on this last week, and it's it's really something to watch this project go in. Um, but it, it, quite a difference. It was quite a difference when we met with you over there when we saw um, there was a whole huge space that used to be where now the offices are. So the, just the use of space is, is more conducive, safety, people are directed into the office before they can get to other parts of the building. So there's just a lot of really positives. But you'll see the, a number of different, um, there's a time frame, you know, part of construction uh, photos and updates and that type of thing. Some classroom wings are still being worked on. But teachers and students are coming back to a bunch of new classrooms. Yeah, it's cool. It's, it's really, really, really nice. So it's coming along really nicely. It's scheduled to be done in what, 21? Next, is, it's next it's summer, next year, yeah. end of, in 2020. End of it'll be ready for September 2020, right? Um, no, it'll be it's done like up. winter. Uh, mm -hmm. September, so it's coming along. Um, at any rate, it's a... Uh, the new website's really going to give us a lot of opportunity to do some nice um, demonstration about all the different projects we've got going on. Um, for ACMA, ACMA is demolished. You can probably do an update on that. So I'll let you guys talk about it. I won't take the wind out of yourselves on that. But we do have a groundbreaking um, on September 21st. Hopefully you all got your invitation. If you didn't, let me know because we want to make sure you receive that. It's from 10 to 11 a.m. And we're going to be having shuttle buses because it's such a small footprint oh, wow. on the campus at the former Hall Street Bar and Grill, oh. which is just at the at top of Center Street and Hall. Mm -hmm. And a bus will just take you down to the to the ceremony itself. So we thought that that was a good, close um, solution to that. And we have the fall bond newsletter in process, which will be scheduled to be completed November 1. So I'll have that to share with you next time we meet. Questions? Yeah. I have a question. So I couldn't find the accountability committee reports for 2018 academic year. Oh, archives? Archive uh, section. Oh. Maybe I just missed it. Okay. All right. We're still building uh, this a, website, too. Um, go to community school bond projects. And we can definitely make bring the archives back, so it's not a problem. With so that. I got, yeah, there are archives for 17, 18, but just the last academic year is... 18, 19. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Good catch. I'll check in with the team, or you guys want to check... Did I just check. miss it? Um, this is a financial summary. This is a financial hmm. summary, but it's you're talking about the bond accountability... Archive bond accountability committee meetings. Hmm. Okay. The right Over. Um, there. Nope. It's funny. It's missing. Here. Is it more? So about I, 18, 19. Well, 14. There's 14, 15, 15, 16, 16, 17, 17, 18. So we're missing 18, yeah, 19. Missing 18, 19. Okay. It's a year not to be remembered. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we'll we'll take care of that. Thank you for that catch. That's great. And we're being responsive to people on finding things or suggestions. You know, we're really take user. You know, we, we want to get that input because we are t making tweaks to it. One of the neat things is the, the search feature is really enhanced on this one. It's a too, strong so engine. So you don't search have to engine. navigate. You can just, if you know what you're looking for, search for it and then it finds it real quick. Do you have any feedback from the community, the public, on the website? Um, positive? feedback um, we've heard from people and suggestions 
which we're always welcome to that. You know, if, um, people kind of missed, for some reason we didn't have um, some of our press clippings or something like that, press room up or something. So we made sure we got all that because they just, and then they also want archives of that as well. It's, it's interesting what people want to hang on to and they don't just want the latest, greatest, they also want to be able to look back, so. Do you collect, uh, I don't know what the proper term is, quick statistics to see what parts are used? Yes, we do have capability with this. Um, we actually have a web governance committee that will be looking at those. Um, we want to get really rolling because we did the soft rollout June 3rd, so almost to the end of the school year. So we really want to ramp up and see how it's used. I think we'll have a better numbers when we're in September and October. Okay, any other comments or questions? Good job. You're doing very attractive as well. Thank you. Um, Josh, good job on your first presentation to the committee. <coughs> like three weeks on the job. And yeah, you got a lot of stuff down. Uh, I do have a question that's come up uh, in, in different ways of late, and that is uh, potential cost impacts due to the Student Success Act and the corporate new corporate tax that's been. Uh, adopted by the legislature. How are we with this bond program anticipating and planning for that, and how do we think it might impact the budgets of our projects? It, it's not going to be related to capital at all. Yeah. It's It needs to be for student programming, so it'll be in our general fund side instead of the bond, the capital side. Right. Okay. Good question because it's I've had that actually a couple of times. People are curious. Um, Where's it going to go? Yeah, what's it going to mm -hmm. do? And, so there, in the bill, the act is very specific about what areas it can be used in. Um, it has to be used for well-rounded education, lowering class size, early childhood, early childhood education, mm -hmm. um, mental health, and mental health, social emotional health of, of students. And so I think um, right now we're in the needs assessment phase of the process, and we're just going to be starting that out. And in fact, we want to engage you all, all in that, maybe in, s in the September meeting we talked about it, okay. Carl. <clears throat> yes, we talked about doing it at this meeting as well. A focus group with you. community meetings that are happening at our <clears throat> website. So you can participate in those as well. You can participate in those as well as um, our own <clears throat> conversation here as your own interests of what you'd like to see happen in terms of programming and opportunity for students in the district. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, this needs assessment will ask just two very high-level questions, so I'll, I'll kind of seed it now so that in September maybe you'll do some thinking, is what are we doing well as a school district, and then what programs and services could we improve for students? And all of you just bring such different lenses as parents, former parents, grandparents, I mean, people that have been involved with the district for a long time. It's very broad questions, and then phase two, so that's between... August and November 1, we have to do the needs assessment, and it has to be sent to ODE, Oregon Department of Education. Then we'll go to phase two, which will be more about the fine tuning, <coughs> taking that input and um, programming that we've got and evaluating that and coming up with what programming would we apply for, for those funds, and putting our application in. That's due in March of 2020. Okay. So it's quite a long process. Um, we won't get the money um, in this year. It's for 2020, 21. So you want to add anything to that? No, I mean, I guess same thing you mentioned, like it goes in the general fund. There's like stipulations on how the money can be used um, for capital <laughs> projects. Um, and I think like um, on our, our, I think our goal like, is like in the mm -hmm. next quarter we have like the needs assessment will be completed. Mm -hmm. John Bridges in the department already has a lot of it done. But um, you know, you have to show where you're at and where you can spend the money. Yeah, you have to take the school district's um, school improvement, the district improvement plan, they call it the continuous improvement plan, and demonstrate um, all the areas in schools, departments, as function as a district. Um, that makes up part of it. And then the other part is the whole community engagement piece. Yep. And with particular emphasis in outreach to underserved populations. So we want to hear from um, students with disabilities and their families, um, students, ELL students, English, English language learners, um, uh, students that aren't succeeding. Um, we're going to have student voice in this. We're going to have parent, guardian, 
business. Uh, we're reaching out to the business community as well. So there's quite a bit of a constituent work to be done over the next couple of months. So. And you probably mentioned them as well. I may have missed it, but certainly our own educators. Are yeah, of course. A significant yeah. Yeah. Teachers. input to us too. We're doing a mixture of community conversations and then um, push out into communities um, of need and uh, of color and uh, making sure that we hear that voice about what's important to them and what would they like to see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next thing on our agenda here was uh, just something we wanted to discuss real quick. So, new middle school slab issues. So this is the uh, yet to be named middle school. What we call it Tim Miller Middle School. Uh, there's an area outside the gym, relatively small area, but the slab, concrete slab, is settling and it's creating some issues with windows and doors and cracks in the drywall and so forth. So. It seems to be a constructability is issue, of course, so it's um, something we're working with the design team and the contractor to kind of sort out what is the cause of the issue and what should be done about it. It's hard to really notice, honestly, and it, it mostly presents itself in the doors and windows. Um, the picture is a little bit skewed. It's, it's not noticeable if you're walking down the hallway. It is within the ADA tolerances. <coughs> We think it's likely a compaction issue, like the soils in that area weren't compacted enough before it was backfilled. It doesn't seem to indicate any larger issues with the structural integrity of the building, but we're working with everybody to try and sort this out and hopefully have a repair on the books for next summer. So this is just an informational item. Any questions? Aaron, how much is it? Are we talking about a quarter of an inch or half an inch? It's about an inch, I would say, yes, side to side. And it's a differential settlement, so it's got an inch of one. Yeah, so the on the right side of the picture is high side, left side of the picture is low side, and it's it's not, I mean, it's not very differential. It's pretty consistent down this hallway here. The area structurally is relatively independent from the rest of the building, too. It's kind of, it's almost framed as like a shed roof section of the building, so. It's not integral with everything else, and I think because of that, they probably didn't spend as much time on compaction as they needed to have. But we're going to go in and do some more investigation, do some borings, actually, and check compaction and get it resolved. So what's that? It's a pretty clear uh, who, which contractor is responsible for. Well, for us, it would be the general contractor. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and he's receptive to working with you on that. They're receptive to working with us on it, yeah. I, I don't think they think it's their responsibility quite yet, but that's what, that's that's what, what we're in the process. <laughs> Looking at the borings, <laughs> getting the data, if, if it shows that they're at, yeah, they're at fault, then we'll put that on them. And look at the contract latent defect, and you know, be able to put that back on them and say, you know, this is latent defect, and you need to, you need to take care of the problem, which, which will get into its own, you know, uh, Set of circumstances, but we'll work through that. So we need we need the facts, we need the data to be able to show that they are uh, responsible for it. And we're on target to identify and correct correct that by next summer. Is that what we're hoping for? Yeah, that's cool. All right, and that's a year before it actually opens as a middle school. Yeah, okay. and the the repair really isn't very invasive at all. It's replacing some sidewalk outside and probably just replacing the slab on the interior. Easily completed within the summer. Okay. Is there any life safety issues with this? Or just... No, it's it's all within code tolerances and everything. So it's just it's an aesthetic issue. For sure. mm -hmm. Okay. Next. Thank you. So we have prepared, uh, as Josh alluded to, some summer project updates. So this is a handout in your desk packets in the back. And we'll just fly through this and uh, hopefully address any questions you have here. So up at the top, um, you know, we just want to go through what what's done, uh, what's yet to be done. So we have a summary of all of the completed projects. And those were, you know, we're considering complete if there's not really any impacts to anybody in the building. So just to highlight for the summer, you know, over 
44 million dollars of work in the team. I've been very impressed coming from, especially from my background, coming down here and just uh, looking at the amount of work in place over the summer period is pretty impressive, and and, uh, and just to commend the team for their hard work. And, and um, you know, we'll go through there and talk about the these various projects. And, and in the bottom, we talk what's the scope, what's current cost, uh, but really looking at what's the work that's been completed, and then what's the work that's going to continue after school starts. So that, and we briefed this to cabinet um, here this week, and we wanted them to get a sense of things that were happening in terms of work after SCAR school, like so Titan, for example, and uh, um, Cedar Village, which we'll talk about. That's kind of the formatting that we went through for the project. On the fifth project down, I do, or fourth, I just want to make sure you're aware that is a donor project. That was the Bukin High School concessions. That was not covered by the bond. So that was a donor project. And it was an add-on to the team. <laughs> I have one, one comment, too, I had to. Um, this is from all of us when we meet people in the community. Again, like there's different buckets of money. So I, I can't remember where it was, but somebody said, how come you're using this million, a million dollars to do this middle school parking lot, and why can't you use that to save teachers' jobs? And I think it's good for us to educate people in different bucket projects, facilities, versus like general fund and um, mm -hmm. teachers and budget cuts there. So, um, you know, it's something that you'll probably come up in your own activities in the community. You know, they are different things or separate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, speaking of the new parking lot, it's done. Yeah, so I can't wait to try it out. We'll see. Every do some donuts up there. <laughs> That's what we need. We're gonna come after you, Harry. The, the parent was saying, like, I mean, of course. Middle school has 11, 1,200 people that you're not going to have, that it would be yeah. usable at all, it would be impossible to use this facility. Yeah, oh, it's crazy. I mean, I, I went there, the new parking lot was full. I mean, yep. the existing parking lot was full. Yep. Every single parking spot. So yeah, so this is I'm glad you got to go. Thing. Yeah. Uh, okay, in terms of projects that still have some impacts, uh, the first two here, Hyden and IMG, our, our maintenance department is dealing with those. And I, we talked about Heighten uh, a little bit. Any more questions on that one? <coughs> Relatively minor impacts uh, as far as. Let's say, actually, Karen, if you could emphasize kind of what the work is, it's after September 3rd. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so for at Heighten, after September 3rd, it's really relatively minor stuff. It's touch up paint, it's uh, finishing a drinking fountain, uh, going through and doing a lot of that completion stuff that really isn't impacting students as they're during the day. It's work that can be done in the evenings. Uh, tackable wall surface uh, will be complete towards the end of the month. So it's an inconvenience, but it's one that yeah. we can live with. And you'll see the common theme for any work after school starts is evening work, um, weekend work in order to, to finish up um, the, the projects. Finishing and uh, other other work like that. Well, not going to do it during the day one. So ISB, we talked about this one a few months ago. Uh, this had a similar significant safety issue that Beaverton High School had with the trusses over the gymnasium. The trusses were cracking and needed to be uh, reinforced in order to be safe to occupy the space. And so that work occurred this summer. Uh, however, as a result of the, the structural work ongoing, the, the gym floor wasn't able to be sealed during the summer. You know, that's certainly something we can live with and, and can get done over winter break. What kind of material do the trusses? They're wood. They're, they're wood. Just straight wood, not glue lamp? Um, they, the members may be glue lamp. Usually they're composite. I mean, they're like bowstring trusses with the single bolt connections and I can't say whether or not they're glue lamb. I guess based on the age of the buildings that they're not glue lamb. I mean the ones at Beaverton were not glue lamb. And it's actually I find this very interesting, but back when the bowstring trusses were designed, it was before the age of computers. And the way that these things were designed, they, they missed some important design factors that are realistic in construction of wood trusses. And so the wood trusses were way overstressed from what they thought they would have been. You know, fast forward to present day, they're able to model how they perform much more accurately and, and found that all the all these trusses were overstressed, like 200%. So it's the big ones at Beaverton High School, ISB. There's still some at Beaverton High School. There's a, a shop area on the building and, and 
I was just talking with Nathan about this the other day. Those need to be replaced at some point. Um, and it exists all over the district, really. So replace the whole trust as opposed to? No, so we're not replacing the trust. So we're reinforcing them. Usually it's going in and adding um, additional wood members alongside. Um, also, they're, they're adding cable tensioning systems because you're tensioning the bottom cords of the truss and, and also adding lateral bracing. So, it's good. Uh, next on the list, Aloha High School. So we're going to dive deep on that one here as our last agenda item for the night. But the work that was completed this summer is in very good shape. The work included kind of footings and shear walls all throughout the school. And I've got more detail on that in the presentation. So most of the hallways in the school were torn up and new footings placed. And the contractor there did a really, really good job of getting it all put back together. Uh, there is some impact, though, the big one being in the gymnasium. There's a large shear wall in the gymnasium, essentially a, like a three-story shear wall goes all the way from the basement all the way up to the roof and it's a, it's a shot creek shear wall which it's installed but it's not quite done as far as paintings and everything so the gymnasium is currently unavailable well, half of the gymnasium and so we've made alternate arrangements for gym classes and the volleyball team any questions on that one Karen when you say that uh, the classrooms and hallways are operational. Does that mean that the, what they installed, if there were an earthquake, that it would? Uh... Good question, and I'll save it for later. <laughs> the answer is it's better, but no, they're not. Uh, it's not up to where we want it to be yet. We're really doing half the project this summer, and finishing it next summer. Uh, Cedar Mill Elementary School, so this is really a big one. Well, we alluded to it a little bit already. We had a rainstorm that damaged the school. The school was very wet. Uh, I was out there in the middle of the night with Surf Pro, getting them cleaning up the building. And they did a good job. They got it mostly cleaned up, but given the, um, the conditions involved, there ended up being trapped moisture and the heat created mold growth in the building. So. We've been chasing that all over, replacing ceilings, um, doing doing flood cuts. You know, if, if rain were to get in here and flood this wall, we would have to go in and cut sheetrock up, essentially four feet, to let the wall dry out, because you would have had trapped moisture in the wall, and make sure you don't have mold growing in order to put everything back together. So we've been dealing with that. The, the initial response that night was the school district just to take immediate action. The contractor now has to leave, and they have had to leave basically the following day in terms of uh, remediation and the build back. And so they, they have taken it on board that yes, uh, the, the rain entered the facility you know, due to their part, and, and they've, they've taken that accountability. And they're moving forward with that. So the, the project started out as a roofing and an HVAC project. Those scopes are largely complete. The HVAC isn't quite up and running yet, mostly due to the fact that we can't turn on the HVAC while there are mold uh, containment areas going. Uh, the mold issue is almost resolved. There are still a couple areas that they're working on dealing with. We, we're like deep into this right now. And Carl and I just came from the site and all <laughs> tomorrow morning so it's a it's an evolving uh, project and we, we think we're going to be ready for the start of school next week teachers are actually coming back into the building tomorrow so most of the classrooms are available there are a couple that we're still working on which are four that we're still working on and their uh, the contractor 2kg is out there working everywhere putting things back together putting sheet rock up uh, cleaning painting trying to get things ready for tomorrow once, once the classrooms were cleared, that's when we, the contractor was allowed to start to build back work and get that. So that essentially <laughs> started this week. Um, like Aaron said, we have four classrooms that failed the testing, and so we're going back through, recleaning, and getting more um, more tests so we can verify that there's absolutely nothing in there. 
Yeah. We're hoping that those get <clears throat> cleared tomorrow. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So as far as the impact, I have a question. Oh, so quick, quick yeah. question. So the rain impact was basically due to the work in progress. Mm -hmm. that, that's and correct. Exposure, exposure to the elements. Yeah. 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 Exposure to the elements. Right. Understand. The impact of, it varies kind of based on the area of the building. By and large, all of the places where we remove sheetrock or ceiling will have sheetrock placed back. It won't be complete in terms of it's not finished and painted, uh, but the sheetrock will be up. So the work to finish those areas will be done on an ongoing basis after school hours and on weekends and so forth. Aaron, you might have show the map that we got today. Oh, yeah, go yeah. for it. Um, so this is the map of the school. So here's your front entry um, of the school. What's that? Yes. Chris, we can put oh, maybe I, I can do it. It'll take me a second. No, I can get out here. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So hey, go ahead and describe it. Let's... Sure. So so we <laughs> we just got this like a few minutes ago here. So the, the green areas, that's all good. So teachers are moving back in tomorrow. Everything's normal. The yellow areas, the classrooms are available, and the teachers will move back into them tomorrow. However, uh, we've said uh, caution is needed, uh, and, and we're going to escort those teachers into those spaces because there's work going on. There's sheetrock being installed. The red areas are the ones that we're still working on getting the mold clearance on. And so we've they took samples today, hoping to get those back in the morning. Working very closely with the principal to um, figure out how to address the impacts and work with the teachers on this. Cafeteria might not be ready. Cafeteria may not be ready, right? Yeah, correct. So we're, we're lining up nutrition sources to, to be prepared Upstairs, yeah. uh, to provide meals as needed for the following week. Right? So they're going to prepare the lunches at sunset and deliver them. Okay. So the good thing is the weather looks good. So PE most likely outside. Cafeteria will be, or sorry, the gymnasium will be the new cafeteria yep. for the first week. Kids love an adventure. Yes. You know, it's going to be different. <laughs> <laughs> They're very flexible about this. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Interesting. And most of the damage, most of the water came in on the west side. It wasn't the entire facility, although there was a lot on the west side. On the the, the lower part of the picture, down at the bottom, you get some uh, leakage in that. Uh, I can't see the number, but it's down in here where you had some Yeah, I'm not much. But most of the, the water came in. Brian, figure out what classroom your kids in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we found out the teacher before we were supposed to, so I probably shouldn't reveal that. <laughs> a source. Sorry, and I'm not it's sure now been are. recorded. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> I'm not sure what classroom they're in. Well, and actually, um, Amy Chamberlain, the principal up there, you know what? Those four rooms are offline. She has been absolutely amazing, and she has moved teachers around so they wouldn't be necessarily where you think they were going to be because she is putting teachers in classrooms to be able to be ready to go by Tuesday so they can start setting classrooms up and making arrangements tomorrow. So She's done a masterful job. We've had the, the staff relocated over to Timberland this week. They did staff development Monday and Tuesday. They spent all day today doing all of their first quarter planning together as teams, and teams of teachers. Um, typical type of activities that teachers would engage in. You don't typically do it in eight hours straight because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of, a lot of planning. Um, but the teachers definitely took charge of that and really wanted to move forward. Um, we will be paying teachers extended contract any, for any teachers who, should, who need to to continue working over the weekend to prepare their classrooms. This is not a, a volunteer activity on their part. <laughs> I will get off and you can drive. Okay, Five Oaks. So Five Oaks is looking good. We're on track there. Like Maureen said, it's a really cool project. I, especially anybody who was in the old school, which I think was everybody, because yeah. we did a meeting yeah. out yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. I think we need to go back in October, because yeah, if definitely. you won't recognize it. It's amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty incredible. Yeah. Very, 
happy with that project and how that's worked. Uh, we've worked very close with our CMGC partner on that one, it's really to get us as much bang for our buck as possible, and it's, it's working out really well. There are some impacts uh, that largely a result of the ongoing construction, you know, continuing the ongoing. Surely the principal there has been really good to work with and very patient, and it's been good. So one of the big impacts will be the main entrance. I'm not particularly happy with the progress there. At the, one of the summer scopes of work was putting in a new vestibule, and that's a little bit behind. So with the new office is up and running, there will be direct access into the new office, but the new vestibule itself won't be functional for another couple of months. The whole area will be safe and secure, though, uh, so it'll work. And we have plans for the, the egress and the exit, and, and, um, or the entrance and the exit, and so uh, Shirley's fully aware of that. Um, we're working around the vestibule, but we'll have it pretty much cleaned up, uh, except for those, uh, there's, there's doors, there's double doors that are missing. That, those are our older, they're long and dying. So West TV roof actually also suffered a water leak, similar to Cedar Mill. Uh, it wasn't nearly as bad as Cedar Mill was, though. So we each had to go through and replace quite a few ceiling tiles, and that's underway right now. Uh, as far as ongoing work after September 3rd and impact, the, the project itself is occurring and was always scheduled to occur after the start of school. So. Come next week, the, the whole building will be dried in, but there will be people out there working on the roofing itself for the next uh, couple of months, actually. So different different rain event. This one happened last week. So the first one for Cedar Bell, August 10th, this one happened last week. And uh, uh, so they were two separate uh, events there. Um, and two separate contractors. Two separate contractors. It's not like you could use lessons it, it, for the it, other contractor. And it was. It, 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 the, the team had, had gone out and communicated, you know, we got rain the forecast, you know, but uh, uh, still got some, some water through that, that building. So the last couple of year, security upgrades. We had noted up at the top that we completed a lot of security upgrades. You can see all the schools listed on here that are done, up and running, fully functional with card readers, access control, the whole deal. There are, the projects that we did this summer, so Barnes, Ice Beam, K, Mountain View, and Sexton Mountain, we went in and installed the new vestibules uh, and doors where necessary, and really the infrastructure side of things. And over the next several weeks, we will be doing the programming and um, getting everything functional with the card readers. There's quite a bit of uh, back of the house programming that takes place on those systems to make them run because they run on uh, time clocks uh, or schedules so the doors open and close at certain times and getting all the peop appropriate people programmed into the system. So for the first few weeks, it'll be necessary to dog down the doors, which is just engaging the panic on the panic devices. So you can and then lastly is our district-wide classroom door lock replacements which actually is our next agenda item, so we can go through it here. Um, this, you will recall, is an added project that we went through. We went through a sort of a menu of items for security upgrades, and this was the one that was recommended to the school board, and they approved as an extra $2 million to go throughout the whole school district and replace classroom door locks with uh, a lever handle with the push button, so anybody could engage that lock and essentially uh, you know, close themselves into a room right, and <clears throat> secure without needing a key. And that was, uh, we did approximately 2,000 classroom door locks that have been replaced. There are 44 that have yet to be replaced and we're working on getting those done. Those were mostly at portable classrooms. On the portables, it's not just a lever, it's a whole panic device. and. We found that the existing doors and frames were really not in good condition and needed to replace the whole assembly before replacing the, the panic device itself. So over the next couple of months, we'll go through and do all of those as well. And then every classroom will be done. Any questions? How that work? So, uh, I got actually a couple more things on that topic. So, 
so the, on the classroom door locks, the beginning project budget was $2 million. We are substantially below that right now. I won't give a number. Thank you. <laughs> but there's a remaining budget in the project. So what we are going to do, as we did all the schools, as you can imagine, a lot of people had opinions on what we should be doing. And so a lot of uh, building administrators ex expressed to us that there's other spaces they want done. So bathrooms, offices, counseling suites, libraries, really any place people are and want to feel more secure. And so we are beginning the effort uh, here in the next couple weeks to go around and what are those and how do we how do we tackle those. <laughs> so we'll be doing those over over the next year. So that should be within budget, absolutely within budget. And the reason why I made that comment, I want to give you some context. Don't want to keep secret, man. No, it's uh, Aaron was presenting the cabinet the other day. I was sharing with one of our bond projects and how much, I mean, what we spent and what our current savings is. And I just looked up and said, never mention the savings to Don. <laughs> he starts adding them up and he says, so, where's that $1 million? Where's that? I said, don't do it. Don't do it. Just refrain until we are complete, sealed, and done before that project is finished. So, love working with Tom, but he hears a dollar figure and it's a dog with a bone. <laughs> okay, any questions on that? Really good project. I, I think for, you know, I mentioned bang for the buck. This is one of the best things we could have done. This is, has made a, a difference to every single teacher in the school district, and they yeah. really love it. Yeah. Right. Okay, Aloha High School seismic upgrades. So some background on this. Uh, the bond, the current bond, included a project for seismic upgrades at Aloha High School. So this is a, a commitment, a part of the bond, and there wasn't a ton of budget associated with the project, and and really the work tied to the project that we had really wasn't vetted initially very well. It was based off of old studies and there wasn't a lot behind it. And in order to extend our ability to complete work within the school, we, we applied for and received a grant from the state of Oregon, the, the SRGP grant for two and a half million, which is great news. However, that grant comes with a lot of strings attached. It means we have to upgrade the building to very specific code standards. So really, we have to upgrade the whole school to life safety standards, and then certain areas need to be upgraded to immediate occupancy, which is a very high bar for a, a school of this vintage. And it really is very inconsistent with the way that it was constructed in the first place. So there are a lot of upgrades, that are very extensive and very expensive. So, I put together some background information on seismic upgrades for those of you who might not be familiar. Uh, really what we're trying to achieve in doing seismic upgrades is to tie the whole building together and make it move as one. When you get seismic waves hitting the school, they're moving sideways, they're moving up and down, and you damage occurs in your building when your different building pieces move at different speeds than each other. As long as they're all moving at the same speed, you're, you're good. But when your roof is going faster than your footings or your walls, that's when things go bad. So the goal here is to tie everything together. You're creating stable foundations, you're creating sheer walls that are attached to those foundations, and then you're creating attachments at the roof level to the sheer walls to connect it all together. So our upgrade project at the Lowell High School. Our current budget is about 12 million or so. Um, we've been working with contractors, so we have a CMGC contractor on the project, Harris Wright, and very good partners. And we've been working with them all along and really determined up front that the best way to execute the project was over two summers. It was too much work to accomplish over one summer, which we experienced this, this summer. We did a lot of work, and there's no way we could have done any more work within the school this year. Um, the work this summer that we just completed was really the most invasive. It was all of the foundation and footing work. And I've got some, some pictures here showing that. But the work that needs to be completed next summer 
is several things. It's, it's largely the roof replacement and the strengthening of the roof diaphragm. So this summer we did foundations and shear walls within the school. Next summer it's everything at the roof level. And really hopefully not a ton of interior impact actually. The other big one is significant structural steel upgrades in the gymnasium and auditorium. The gymnasium in particular is very interesting if you go in there. It has these huge steel girders that run across the thing, but they're not connected to each other laterally at all. So if there were to be an earthquake, all these things are just folding over. They're not even, the, the columns, or the girders themselves aren't even connected to the columns. They just sit on top of them. It was just fascinating to me. It blows my mind that you know, things could be constructed that way. But at the time it was engineered, you know, it was built to code, and it, uh, there wasn't really an awareness of, of seismic issues in our area, so that's pretty interesting. How old is the school again? It was built in like 1969, 68, 69. <laughs> so 50 years, uh, which isn't even nearly as old as many of our buildings. So this is a diagram showing some different areas of work, and it's probably hard to take much out of this without being too familiar with the, the school, but the green ones are areas where we just simply removed sections of slab in the hallway, and all the, none of the slab in the building right now has rebar in it. It's not connected to the foundation walls, so this was adding some sheer support to the school by removing those slabs tying everything together with rebar, tying the walls to the slab to create some stability and movement. The orange areas are where we installed huge footings. So it looks small on this. But in the building, they're huge footings. They're within the hallways. They're four foot deep footings by like four foot wide. And I've got some pictures. It's really interesting. And the yellow was minor work, but it was connecting really what was that remodeled section of the building to the, the rest of the building. So it was done in 2008, was it? And that's the part that looks out to the field, just to give you orientation. So at the very top, that's the entry to Aloha High School, that U up in the middle. So what we were doing in those yellow areas was, re interestingly, it was removing a seismic joint. So when it was constructed, there was a seismic joint installed there. Well, there wasn't a seismic joint installed at the foundation level or at the roof level. And so you get this wild differential movement of the thing. So it's all tied together now. And then on the bottom right is the really cool one. That's our big footing for the shear wall in the gymnasium, which I've got a picture of. Seismic. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, it's probably hard to appreciate the scale, but the one on the left there, those, those are big footings. Four, they were like four feet stuff. deep. That's big. Those are four feet deep and at least five feet out from the wall. Yeah. Those were massive. Yeah. And they ran, that's running down an entire, but that's running down a hallway. Oh. And that was replicated in all those orange spots back on the map. This one here, this is fascinating. I mean, I mean, because this, the equal size of this here was also on the inside there. I would say this is easily, the equivalent of this room in size. Yeah, and it was, it was even deeper. I mean, it was five, yeah. six feet deep. It was. It's just. It became now. It's a giant footing. And there wasn't a footing there before. There was no spread footings at all in these locations. Yes, this is the weight room actually. So this is the. This is below the gymnasium. So this was a concrete wall that's like three stories tall with. It's hard to see on the picture there, but there really wasn't a footing underneath the thing. I mean, it was just a, a stem wall that's that tall, and that's what holds up the whole building. It's crazy. And these are a couple areas, but the one on the left is what I was talking about, replacing the slab and putting rebar in. And then on the one on the right is another example of the orange type of footings. Can I drag for a second again? Yeah. All right. I got to show you. Oh, you got some other pictures? Yeah, this just fascinated me. I'm by no stretch an engineer of any sort, but looking at this, I, I had the wherewithal to think, OK, there's, shouldn't there be something attaching that wall <laughs> to the foundation? And there was nothing. 
I mean, so honestly, they they had to go back through, and every single one of these is now have these massive bolts that are going into the concrete. But also just describe the footings in this building of what was there. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, this was <laughs> this was it. There really it, it doesn't it exist. Straight. It's amazing seeing how our new facilities are constructed. It's just it's massive versus this, you know. Yeah. This looks like your house, really. Yeah, they were just massive. So this is the entry. So you can see right here, this is the entrance into the school right here. Just to give you, and they had these huge trenches with, <coughs> they had to line the hallways um, with some kind of material, <coughs> excuse me, to try to alleviate as much damage as possible as they were having these front loaders go through the building to get all of this rock and dirt out of the building. It's just crazy. Did you have a lot of utility relocation that had to happen as part of this work too? Yes, for sure. And, and that really, <coughs> that specifically was a huge cost driver on the project. And it was <coughs> really is hard to determine. Or we worked around sewer lines. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, and that thing stays, right? We just yeah. pour concrete around it and it's still functional. Oh, Jesus. Uh, let's see here. Sorry. Okay, so here's a little bit on costs. And it was a great question, Cheryl. And really, the utilities and a lot of those things are huge cost drivers on the project. And, and, and at this point, the project is uh, it's over budget. So current budget right now is about 12 and a half million. The work completed this summer was about 7.1 million. So we, we established a GMP with the contractor. And we did this intentionally knowing that we needed time to figure out how to bring the, the, the budget closer to where we're at, the, the project cost closer to where we're at. So we were able to split it into two bars this summer and next summer. And that allowed the team a lot more time to go in and work on the design and make sure everything was was good. So where we're at right now, we have you know this summer's work complete largely. Actually did really, really well. And we, so just yesterday, actually got the GMP estimate from the contractor for next summer's work. And that works about 12.2 million. So the total project estimate of completion at this point is 19.3. And that would require a, uh, a budget increase. So we've actually been projecting this for several months now on this report, if you've seen that on the last page. The last page is the seismic page, and we've been showing that on there for quite a while. Uh, what we projected was about a $6 million impact, and it came in a little more than that at 6.85. We briefed the school board on this the other day and said a range of between 6 and $8 million is, is what we're expecting, and it came in a little bit, you know, kind of in the middle of the range there, so that's good. But it's tough, it, but I feel like we have done it really the best that we could do to make sure that costs are contained and in order to achieve the project objectives that we have. So a little bit on that, you know, why, why do we need to do this? Why is it important? The flow is uh, a very important asset in school for the, for the school district. It is 50 years old. It's not an old building relative to a lot of the other buildings in the district, and it needs to last for quite a while. Just looking at the cost to replace schools, it needs to, to last really as long as it can last. And, and going in and putting on a brand new roof, doing these seismic upgrades, really is very important to the school. And it, it's, a, it's a huge asset, and doing these upgrades appropriately um, will continue to make it a good asset for a long time. I would ask, also add another factor in this, <clears throat> in that is what we've done, obviously, with our new construction with Mountainside, Terminal and new elementary school models, is being able to have um, occupancy um, after an event and being able to do the same thing at a lower high school with an existing facility is trying to you know, kind of spread this across the district so that we actually have our, our there's somewhat of a community-minded perspective in this, too. 
we already have agreements with the Red Cross for multiples of these facilities. And what that means is, in the case of an event, we truly hand over the keys to our facility. And it becomes theirs for the duration of the emergency. And our agreements are to hand it back to us in the same exact shape in which we gave it to them. Um, we would be able to do the same thing at Aloha High School as we would need something in that area of the community too. So we don't have the infrastructure within the city or within the, our school district um, for these. I mean, when you start looking across our district, um, I would say we're significantly better shaped than what um, you know a downtown region of Portland is um, in terms of being able to respond and have the facilities available. So just trying to get Aloha up to that same standard. Can you remind us how much the grant was from the state for a lower Two and a half center? million. Two and a half million. Yep. Is that in addition to the 12.5 or part of the 12.5? It is part of it, right, John? Yes. Yes. It's part of it. It's complicated because we have to account for it separately. Is the design complete for the full 19.3 million? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so this number is a, like a GMP proposal. So it, once the budget, or if the budget becomes available, we can, that's what we would execute the contract. And Howard S. Wright has been a great partner. I mean, one thing that really struck me recently in dealing with some of these things like Cedar Mill is they did an excellent job at, at Aloha, and really it's amazing the resources that they threw at the project. And I would be concerned to do it with a, a lesser caliber of a contractor. You know, we could say, you know what, this cost from them is too much. We're going to go out and hard bid this thing. And just in talking about it with the team and thinking about it, I don't think that's a good choice. I think there's so much risk associated with that that it's not worth it. You know, we may not get any bidders. We may get uh, a bidder who's really not equipped to handle the project appropriately. And so what in, in approving a budget increase next summer, it's completing the seismic work at the roof level, which we have to do to be eligible for the $2.5 million and it is getting a new roof for the whole facility. So, thoughts, questions? What, what, just generally, what was the design solution for dealing with those trusses? Or, or, uh, it's adding quite a bit more steel, so it's a lot of cross-bracing, it's, okay. it's a lot of um, attachments in different areas. And so it's not just the gym, too, it's also the auditorium. So the auditorium ceiling gets a lot of reinforcement as well as everything up above all the, the catwalks and everything. Mm -hmm. So all that cross bracing can be done in place without removing the existing traces? Yes, exactly. Yep. Will they actually be attaching those to the walls? The cross bracing? No. Oh yeah, they'll look, they'll be attached to the, yeah. the column. Right now they're just setting up there. Yeah, correct. They will be attached. Okay. So, any questions on this? We we talked about a bit about the process today, but we need to have school board approval in order to do a budget increase. And I think you know Eric can speak to this, but I think the school board would like to hear some sort of uh, comment or recommendation from this committee. And so when you did the, um, the contract for this, did you do the GMP in two parts? The, or did you, um, did you say you just got the revised estimate? Yeah, so the contract allowed for it to be phased. So it'll be two, it'll be two GMPs within the same uh, project. So a couple of things I'll note, you know, within this, this total project budget, 19.3 million, there is a pretty healthy contingency. So it's like one and a half million is the current contingency. This summer, actually, we hardly dipped into the contingency at all. I think they used 150,000 out of the contingency this summer. So I think this is a good conservative number, and there's a good chance we wouldn't have to use all the contingency, but you never know until you open up the roof. You know, There could be huge sections where the roof decking is rotted and needs to be replaced. There are several 
cost drivers that really are, are going into this that weren't expected from the outside. Um, I can go through those if you like. So up on the roof, you know, imagine replacing the entire roof of the school with this vintage. There's tons, there's hundreds of fans, skylights, mechanical units, roof drains, and all of that has to be addressed. They're having to take them off, redo the flashings. With, since it's a seismic project, you're in many cases having to redo the curbs and the, the supports on those and the attachments of them. Uh, the skylights themselves on the building all have to be just replaced. They're not fall rated, and so it's not safe to be walking out there on the roof without fall protection unless the, the skylights become fall rated. Um, many of the mechanical units on the roof are functional now, but when you go and you take them off of the building and try and put them back on, a lot of a significant percentage of the cost of the units is actually that work. And so, for units that are at the end of their life, it's really not the right thing to do to take them off and put them back on. And so, in many cases, those are having to be replaced. A lot of it, like Cheryl asked, is the electrical penetrations and things, having to move all of those things around, you know, the gas lines and the conduits up on the roof require a ton of work. The building as it exists right now doesn't have overflow drains on the roof, and so that's a, sort of a code-driven requirement that we're having to go in and add overflow drains. It's good to have, but it, that's a big cost for the project too. I have a possible related question to mm -hmm. so maybe answer your question. Answer your question with a question. Sure. So last year you engaged us in a conversation about um, generating criteria to address potential programs or projects. Sure. Would would this be better argued in that pers from that perspective or as a as a, a what you're, you're saying is take it to the school board as a budget increase? Um, that's an interesting question. So I think that would be possible. However, I think there already is a commitment to do this project out there for the voters uh, to do the seismic. And I would have to think that that, is, that is, takes priority over new projects. Because this project was in on the list, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. When you're talking about the program and certain projects, those would be things that would be additions to the list. Right. I think another factor in that, and it's a good question, Jerome. Another factor is the fact that we accepted um, state dollars to this project, and so it. So was that before or after the bond? After. After. Okay. So it furthers our commitment to completion. Yeah. So. So we would not, if we didn't go through and complete the work next summer, we would not get the two and a half million. It would go, it would go away. It is the, is the, ex, was the acceptance of the, it, it sounded like you were saying at the beginning, the acceptance of the state grant entailed a higher level, or higher standard for the seismic companies? Yes, correct. Can you characterize the marginal costs increase driven by that? Sure. So the, the difference there is it's really it's a code-driven standard that the performance objectives of like life safety, damage control, uh, immediate occupancy, there's very specific code meanings to those. And I'm not a structural engineer, so I can't really explain those. But by accepting the state money, we have to hit those thresholds versus I would say the bond commitment is to do seismic upgrades. And that could mean almost anything, honestly. But is, is, was there, can, can you estimate what the difference was between the, the original standard and the higher standard that entailed from the acceptance? You know, I, it would be hard to do that. I think what we would do is if, you know, if there was no appetite for a budget increase on this project whatsoever, we would just spend the budget available and say that we spent that money on seismic upgrades until it was gone. You know, go around adding plywood on the roof or creating sheer walls or that sort of thing. Versus now, we know, you know, Aloha will be upgraded to life safety standards, which will be on their second high school that actually is for the entire high school. And Mountainside in this room? Mountainside. Mountainside's an immediate occupancy. Yep. Yeah, Southridge has issues, Westview has issues in areas. Too easy. 
<laughs> we won't talk about beer tonight. No, yeah. So in our previous meeting, we discussed a list of one of the previous meetings. We had a whole list of. Uh, schools and how much they would cost for seismic upgrades and mm -hmm. things like that. So doing this would remove Aloha from that list, would it not? It would, yeah. Yep, absolutely. Oh, completely? It would, yeah. It would be up Stop. to life safety okay, standards. Yeah. So I mean, there's always things you can do to be better, but it would say, hey, this one's Done. check the box. Yeah. Yeah. This is within where we yeah. wanted to live. So the board, like we have, we talked about it a little bit in the meeting at the working session, and you know maybe we're at sunk costs and we just walk away and button it up right now. But it, I think it's um, obviously the board cares a lot about safety, the number one thing. So I mean, this is you saw the pictures and you see the anchors not even there. It just seemed like that code standard was so far gone, 50 years old that you know it's really not really a safe building if we had a, a small tremor even. Yeah. So I think the board was like, pretty sure the board was going to say, yep, we got to step up, safety first, and then other objectives. Which I think will be like in the next bond project. I mean, or we'll talk about that later, maybe. But, but if we do our bond project, you know, we'll be adding things from like safety yeah, and usability. So we're knocking off things from the other list, right? Right. Now. So I think that's valuable on that. Yeah. It's just it's a tough pill to swallow because you know it's kind of yeah. it's ballooned from 10, 12 million to 19 million. We got two and a half back from the fund, which is great. But still, yeah. we're spending more to get to a really awesome state. I think another piece of this too is. Um, a nod to Aloha. We're making significant improvements. Aloha yeah. has been, I would say, hit multiple times with the opening of the last three high schools. They had a significant pull from Westview when those when that opened, a significant pull from Southridge, and again Mountain. from Mountainside. Correct. And so being able to invest in this school, um, I think our next investment in this school and the next bomb needs to be some windows in that facility. <laughs> <laughs> For learning space. Uh, For learning, learning spaces, yes. Yeah, learning space. um, but certainly, it, uh, I think it, it's the right thing to do, given the work that's begun um, and our investment in the school and community. Tom, I think to go back, I'm oh, sorry, to, oh. uh, to go back to your question about the cost, I think we go back to looking at how the, uh, the product is put together. And, and you know, the, the team at the time made the, the, made the um, decision based on the scope, but if they're dealing with seismic and then some of the unknowns, it's a, that's a pretty big task to look at, plus with the chain of codes. So how, how we do our project packaging, how we put the scope together, something we need to look at moving forward for the next bond. Yeah, it's definitely worth saying that, you know, there have been a lot of lessons learned around the seismic work. I've learned a ton in working with the state in the grant program. We're getting ready to do a project at Beat Breakers, and, and I think that will go a lot more, more smoothly than this one. We've learned a lot in how we approached it. For sure. Uh, I guess we always run into projects where you, know, you do ask that question: Are we, you know, stuck in the the sunk cost fallacy? But usually, where where that's a bigger issue is you don't know if throwing more money at the project is actually going to get you the outcome you want. And in this case, it seems really clear that yes, we'll get the outcome we want. And um, especially. It comes to something like seismic safety. I'm sure anything is better than nothing, but kind of half done doesn't really seem yeah. like it's worth the investment. Um, and, and I think you know when you think about the program reserve, um, you know any criteria we'd, we'd apply, most likely the first one would be safety. So um, I, it, it feels like a no-brainer to me. Mm -hmm. And you know I appreciate that you you know you learned a lot of lessons, but I think. Anytime you're dealing with a 50-year-old building or older, it's it's hard to get those numbers right, um, or it may, it may not even be possible to get it right up front. And so, I don't I don't think we should spend too much time, you know, um, feeling bad about the fact that the initial estimate was lower than we thought. Um, you know, maybe next time do a bigger contingency, but. <clears throat> But at the end of the day, um, you know, these sorts of projects are incredibly complex, and part of part of our job is you know, applying the criteria and uh, you know, making the right decision. So I'd be very supportive of the budget increase. I am too, but I have one question that ties in with Jerome's comments about the prioritization. You're going to take $7 million out of that. So, yes, so let me clarify if you will indulge me. So this is our chart on our summary here. We've got the three different lines, right? The the yellow or the purple line is the program reserve. That's what it's 
current budget for the program reserve. It's in at 43.7 million. The red line, you'll recall, we introduced last year in an attempt to demonstrate that we think where we're actually at when we fulfill all the voter commitments is closer to that red line, and currently 12 million. So that was largely at the time driven by the district wide repairs project. So it was 98 million. We said, hey, we think we need about 25 million more to complete the mostly roofing and HVAC projects. That line reflects that. But also at this time, it reflects this increase for LOA. But increase, it includes 6 million of this increase for LOA. Oh, it does. Oh, yes. The red line does. Okay. So where are, we, where are the school board to authorize this transaction? The red line goes down by 850,000 not by six million. And so the program reserve and the S and the green line, the reserve plus contingencies, those both go down the full six point eight million. But the red line, you know, where we think we're at, once we fulfill all the commitments, it's still a little over eleven million. So it wouldn't be my concern would be that not knowing all the other things that might be buying for that money. Are we bumping off something that is going to create a big problem with the public, or is it pretty well justified that what we're doing is a high priority, as has been mentioned? So my feeling when you look at the, the risk uh, with the rest of the pond and the, the committed projects that we have is that that $12 million is about 11 point. $2 million is a very good estimate. There's very little risk associated with other remaining large projects. ACMA or? ACMA's, I mean, if you look at the report for ACMA, yeah. ACMA's committed, we have a contractor, we have two years construction. It's actually sitting on $5.8 million dollars in contingency, so 17% contingency. So we'll, we will at some point soon draw down the contingency on ACMA. Once, really, once we get past demolition, we will we'll do a reduction and transfer it back into the program reserve because it's it's a healthy contingency at this point. And Five Oaks is in pretty good shape too. We feel we feel really good about where we're at on that. And really, those are the the remaining large projects that we have with large risk associated with them. Excellent question to ask because I think that's the reluctance. I don't think it's a question of is this a good project to do sure. or not, but if we recommend to the board that it be funded, what are the implications for other work not getting done yeah. in the future? Uh, other important priority work as well. Um, Aaron, when do you need a recommendation from this group? Great question. So we would like it as soon I mean, I. I would like it if you were able to do that tonight. Uh, if not, I'm happy to answer any questions as they, they come. Um, but it, it really is going to take a couple months with the school board. We need to present it to them. And then the following month, they can uh, act on it. And we would like to do this as soon as possible. The reason being, we, we want to be able to commit, you know, sign a change order with the contractor so they can get their subcontractors on board. The current uh, estimate is based on subcontractor bids, so it's literally they want to be able to sign those contracts and start submittals and order materials and all that good stuff. Uh, the market is so tough right now, you're having to commit to these guys, especially roofers, really as early as possible to, to make sure you have the available labor. How long will they honor the, the GNT um, estimate for? It, for a couple months. I told them to expect this to take a couple months. So it's, it's probably October, November, really, just at some point when we need to be able to do But it's assuming a June start of work next year, yes. right? Those Correct. prices are June prices, 2020. Yes. Yeah. Correct. And does the 12 million comprehend the 2.5 we'll be getting from the state, or is that? It does, it does. yes. Do I hear a motion from the board, or the, the back? <coughs> I would move um, a recommendation to approve the, the budget increase as um, uh, requested by staff. I'll second. Thank you. Any further discussion? I think that was a good presentation. Aaron, you walked us through a lot of detail there. Are we ready to go? Okay. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 
Thank you. Yeah. Have more work to do. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> <Good luck. laughs> um, I think Jerome does raise a good question in that last meeting, which was when May. <laughs> May. Yes, we had talked about the program reserve use call process, and we we nibbled at it. I think, and we need to come back and have a conversation. Uh, can we ask Josh and Aaron to think about? How, how we have that, um, we'll continue to get updates on what we think the program is going to be, uh, and then probably do that, I think, in the next couple of months. Sure. We have to prepare a, a draft process for our consideration, I think that was too, but we didn't get very deep into it. So I, I think the sooner the later, because you're going to start to get pressure, the board's going to start to get pressure, I would imagine, right. from community folks with brilliant ideas wanting to know if they, they can do that. Well, especially as we begin to look at the next bond yeah. and what those needs are as we're going through building assessments right now. we're. You know, we're investing our time and resources into figuring out where our needs are for the next round of bonds. Um, it makes sense. I would also add that on your agenda, so because I, I would love Josh to be able to get his eyes on that. He's not seen that. Okay. So for him to add a, a perspective, and I'm sure it'll be a far more brilliant plan after he's done with it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no pressure. No, it's none whatsoever. But I also think if we can also take some time um, for a community process, um, for the, um, oh my goodness, the resources coming in from the state. Why is it success fund? Student, student success fund. Yes. So if we. So we'll do that? Yes. Student so are we talking agenda items for next week? Well, a couple. I just, sorry, I just wanted to make sure. Because time's going to fill pretty quickly. Because yeah. that process is going to take, I would say, easily 45 minutes to an hour to engage in the dialogue around that. One other quick question. This $12 million does not include the money that we set aside for all interest, does that? It does not. No. Nope. Okay. That's no. it's, it's, its own uh, protected, it's bucket. protected bucket. Setting aside. You're not going to let us forget about those Raleigh Hills. No. <laughs> We're going to build a school there someday. <laughs> or not. <laughs> the program reserve process, we've moved. I just <laughs> yeah, every single meeting. It's come since uh, January 30th of 2019. Uh, moved it to the next meeting. Moved it to the next meeting. This is the. This will be the fourth iteration of moving it. So, I'm mean, serious. I think. I think it would be fair that uh, we get it on the agenda and do something with it. I mean, we actually have it pretty well developed too, so we could re recap it uh, next time. And you know, refresh everybody's memory on it before we start uh, picking apart and stuff. It's a good starting point. Yeah. Yep. Be happy to talk about it tonight. Excellent. Put it on the agenda. Let's do it. Are we committed, folks? <laughs> yes. Let's do it. We're committed. <laughs> All right. Any anything else for the good of the order? So next meeting, they one of the new schools, refurbished schools, or do you have a suggestion? Uh, Five Oaks or William Walker, one of those. Two. Do five hours, I would say I always love seeing new facilities. You know, it's always great to yeah. see your project. And so this is September 25th. Is the next meeting, so right. The library should be open, according to our presentation. Okay, so we're going to have it there, so Aaron doesn't miss it. We're having the next school board work session there, though, too. So oh, that's right. That's okay. Okay. You know, everybody else wants to see it too. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. That school has needed a facelift for yeah. so long. It's awesome. Yeah, I'm sorry. I do have one other question. When I was looking through this material, um, there were a number of schools that it uh, said construction complete, and then it indicates that uh, the closeout is not complete. Construction was completed two years ago. Which one are you referring to specifically? Mountain size or? I have to. There, there were three, three or four. No. I will give our uh, program uh, construction manager a chance to answer that question. <laughs> he works a lot on those. So there's a lot that goes into closing out our projects, um, especially with the new schools. 
One thing that was really important to our maintenance staff was letting the um, one-year warranty period go by and let them kind of give their input on um, any issues that they were finding with the building. So that's kind of one piece of it. And then kind of this continuing work that happens with kind of small repairs here or small improvements there as staff start kind of living in the building. Um, and we did audits on some of these um, projects and that took a bit of time with the alternative procurement. So with um, Sato and Mountainside where we did a CMGC contract, we had those um, contracts financially audited by a third party and that took some time too. And then kind of working through the process with the contractor once we got the results of those audits back. Um, so the good thing is with Sato and Vos, those are both very, very close and should be financially completed, um, hopefully by the next report, which will be the August report or the September report. So those are both very close. Um, and Mountainside, I'm not totally sure how close that one is, but it's, it's getting there too. So, it definitely takes longer than we would like, especially um, kind of the accounting side of me. I love it if it happened a lot faster, but um, with these projects, there's, they're big and there's a lot of moving pieces and kind of a lot of contracts that we have to work through closing out and a lot of kind of benchmarks that we have to hit until we're all really comfortable releasing those funds. I, I kind of appreciate a lot of the all type. Back on my experience, I had in Saudi Arabia where it was taking twice as long to close a project out than it did the actual construction. <laughs> so, and the Royal Commission got a reputation for that to the point that everybody that bid on jobs, when they bid on a job, they put money in that they figured they'd never get or they wouldn't get for three or four years. So you're essentially jacking up your costs of your work by letting sure. that go on and, and uh, getting that reputation. So they, I would encourage you to try to close them out quickly. Sure. And the good thing is a lot of the prime contracts have actually been closed out with these. So um, Vos and Sato and even Mountainside, those uh, the prime contractor contracts were closed out months ago. Um, I think even a year ago in the case of Vos. Um, so we, we've we been in a pretty good process of getting those prime contracts closed. And then there's just kind of the little things that pop up um, that it's pieces of work that, that we kind of find that it's not worth it to you know do it as a change order with the prime because then we're going to pay way more markup or anything like that. So we kind of close out the, the prime contract and then engage in these smaller contracts to kind of fix some of the systems or make little improvements that we okay. don't really realize are an issue until we've moved into the building. That makes me feel a little better. Yeah. You, you haven't got, you're not retaining a lot of money. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, retainage is paid out on all of those projects and those contracts are close. The projects. Sorry. No. No. Great question. Yeah. Hi, suggestion and maybe I'm the only one that would find this interesting but for a, a future agenda um, it would be interesting to see given that you have some of these projects even with similar designs that you've done CMGZ versus hard bid um, an analysis of, um, kind of both quantitative and qualitative yeah. financial performance on those contracts versus and including like lessons learned I mean, personally, professionally, I find that very interesting. I and can present it right now if you want. I already have a presentation oh. made for it. So. Yeah, we can absolutely do that. Remember, it's only a two hour meeting next time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe November. Maybe for future open item, but like, um, you know, we're, we just think about the future. I'm not sure if this committee will help, but like, you know, for the next bond, maybe there's something out in a couple of meetings forward we want to. Actually, I think, think it might about. be a good idea for us to just appraise this committee what we're currently doing to assess for the next bond yeah. so we can give kind of a rundown of what we're engaged in right now. I think the board is looking at, um, you know, 
sampling with a committee to see like what you know appetite when how much you know political climate those kind of things so so right. I might have some more updates on that later on. right actually I'll be another committee runs that's a different committee that's mm -hmm. yes Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah.